Hello and welcome to the group exhibit Hydrogen Fuel Cells at the Hanover Messe 2012. Um, right now I'd like to invite you to come and join our next um, interview with FuelCon. I'll be talking to Matthias Borde from the Managing Board about the latest trends in battery and fuel cell, fuel cell testing. Please welcome Matthias Borde to the stage. Hi. Thank you for joining us today. Yeah. Sir, you just... Thank you very much for the introduction. <laughs> and good afternoon to everybody. Well, maybe um, for those of you who don't know FuelCon, you could tell us a little bit, first of all, about, uh, about your company, just briefly. Yes, I counted the number of our participations here. It's, uh, at this time, I think we participate the 11th time at this group exhibit. Wow. Yeah, yeah one of the oldies here. Uh, with the test uh, business, we work since 20 years, and uh, we are really focused on fuel cell testing as well as battery testing. We provide in that area a complete range covering PEM fuel cells for more automotive applications, solid oxide fuel cell test stations, as well as battery testing. Okay, great. Um and here you have some, also some specialities that you offer, as well as the PEM testing and um, solid oxide fuel cell. And yes, if you are going into this field of uh, alternative energies and, and future energies, then you are focused with a lot of other advantages and requests. And um, that's why we have in our range uh, test stations for electrolyzers too, for instance. Uh, electrolyzer is a very old or very traditional technology, but it's uh, actual again in the focus because of the storage demands for, to stabilize the electric grid. That's why we have a lot of demands for this electrolyzer testing and um, to design such stations, you are faced with some advantages, like high pressures, like handling of liquid and hydrogen mixtures and so on. Safety is a uh, big challenge in this kind of test stations. And on the other hand, we have um, real customized demands. For instance, uh, test stations for redox flow batteries. Redox flow battery is an I think uh, a known principle, a battery with liquid electrolytes, potassium for instance, and uh, in these stations you have to handle aggressive lies together with, um, let me say, battery demands for charging and discharging. It's something like a blend between a fuel cell and a battery. And um, all of the challenges for uh, to use materials with uh, corrosion protected and so on. It's, an, I think, for our engineers, a big challenge to make uh, a proper design of this kind of test stations. But we like this because it's always new demands and gives us uh, new challenges in our business. Sure, and, and when you say testing equipment, you, you're talking about performance testing, right? It's not only performance testing, but the typical way, the typical customer from us is the research engineer who has to meet some benchmarks in his R&D program, who has to fulfill some, let me say, performance requirements. And that's why it's uh, the performance test, but as well as uh, the testing of a long time stability, because this is one of the still remaining uh, challenges in, in the fuel cell as well as in battery, that you have long time stability of the parameters, long time stability of cell voltages, as well as uh, stability of leakage conditions of, of test items. And to benchmark this, to test this, our stations are designed for real long time operation, which includes 5,000 hours for automotive application or around 40,000 operation hours for stationary power applications. Yes, because as a manufacturer of fuel cells or electrolyzers, why is it important for them to have their own testing equipment in-house? Um, it is important for several reasons. At first, 
what we provide to the customer is only the tool. And the customer uses this tool to make his own test runs. And the, uh, the specialty of each customer is to define this test run. Because a test run has to be designed in that way that you can run in three months a very accelerated test program that gives you an information how my final stack will work for 10 years. Because nobody will start to test for 10 years, and after 10 years, you see, okay, I have to change this and this and proceed for another 10 years. That's why, but this is the, I think, the confidentiality and the, the expertise of the customer to real design this accelerated uh, test conditions as well accelerated test runs and, and duty cycles for a fuel cell or for a battery. Uh, that's why he needs his own because it is his own property. Yeah. Yeah. So um, during the testing phase, uh, you would produce a lot of um, electricity. Um, do you offer any solutions for um, the electronic uh, load? <laughs> Why are you laughing at, at my question? <laughs> this is, it's a good question, yes. <laughs> but um, it's um, especially if you go for a larger test field, they produce electricity and the typical way of a test station is that uh, a test station has an uh, electrical load, maybe an air-cooled electrical load, and then you waste this uh, electricity to bring it into the ventilation system and you pay a lot of um, money for the, I think, for the operation of this ventilation system to bring away all of this heat from the, from the fuel cell or from the battery. Um, and sometimes customer has other possibilities that they need more, for instance, hot water or, or other energy carriers. And that's why we provide three types of electronic loads. We are able to provide the simple air-cooled. This is okay if you have a small test station in a research institute and have no real demands on the ventilation system and you produce maybe 500 watt energy, that is okay. Uh, in the second step, we are able to provide uh, water-cooled electronic loads. If you have proper water cooling capabilities in your facility, then you can use this to heat up water or to bring the heat back into uh, the water cooling system. And uh, the third possibility, which is uh, recommended for larger test fields and larger test stations, is that we have uh, uh, electronic loads with grid feedback capability. That means we feed the electronic uh, energy, which will be attracted from the stack, back into the grid. And uh, you have two advantages. You can earn money by testing. Mm -hmm. And in a second, or you can save money better. Nobody will earn money because you need hydrogen. Uh, in a second way, your complete facility investment is on a real low level because it's only a uh, switching cabinet with standard uh, high power electronic solutions and they will feed back this uh, electricity back into the grid. This is real simple. Uh -huh. And um, what sort of... Uh testing equipment do you have that makes you stand out from your um, competitors? Um, we uh, analyzed very early the needs of the customer in the fuel cell industry as well as in the battery industry and we found that um, on the cell level, cell testing level as well as on the stack testing level it's appreciated to attract to get more information from the test item, more, let me say, electrochemical information. That's why we started 15 years ago to develop our own impedance analyzers. This is not typical for a company like us to uh, design and produce our own electronic equipment, including the electronic loads. But I think the uh, impedance analyzers gives uh, a real value for the final product because from the beginning from the cell level you can start to develop your own models 
uh, your own electrochemical models, you can develop your own parameters, which are later part of the control system of a, let me say, of a fuel cell system to attract diagnostic information. And uh, to have this tool already available on the cell level and uh, proceed this on the stack level, I think this is one of our biggest advantages, what we offer to the customer. I can say, I can, can, can explain a lot of more others. Um, what we are able to do is to um, provide turnkey solutions. Mm -hmm. Turnkey solutions means that uh, our typical customers operate not only one test station. They operate a couple of test stations in a large test field. And in the beginning, you have to um, made a lot of design work for your facility equipment, including design of the ventilation system, design of the complete uh, electricity supply, of the cooling water supply and so on, and last but not least of the safety concept of the complete facility. And uh, we have a specific engineering department within the company and we uh, support our customers in a very early stage of discussion with the necessary information to have an, an well-designed facility equipment around this. Because later on, if you operate test equipment, if you operate test stations, then the cost of operation of a test field should be reflected. The cost of operation of a test field can, in, can be incredible high if you have a wrong design approach in the beginning. And that's why we offer these services early in a very early stage to the customer. Yeah. And when you say customer, who, who are your, um, your key customers? Who, who is very interested in, in your testing equipment? Uh, from the beginning, we have an let me say a deep impact in the uh, car industry we are not we are located in magdeburg it's uh, not so far away from here and not so far away from uh, let me say europe's uh, biggest uh, car maker mm -hmm. it's one of our key customers and uh, you can find automotive customers everywhere in the world including asia and and in, in europe and for the mobile application for PAM fuser application we find the key customers in this field and uh, for the high temperature fuel cell test stations solid oxide fuel cell test stations it's uh, mainly the research organizations which are within our customer range as well as uh, final users of uh, solid oxide fuel cell stacks okay um, I don't know about you all but I'm really intrigued to hear um, you obviously have a lot of knowledge about um, where the PEM fuel cell is now, where the solid oxide fuel cell is now, where batteries are. What, what are your kind of broad findings? I know you can't disclose your, your client's <laughs> information, but can you maybe give us a rough idea of um, what needs to be improved the most for each of these um, systems? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you're allowed to disclose. <laughs> no. On one hand, uh, we sign a lot of NDAs, non-disclosure agreements. That's why it's, um, I cannot release secrets for, for sure. sure. Yeah, that's clear. Yeah. But uh, a general um, statement is that um, you have in the past, let me say, three, two years, you have this battery hype. Yeah? And uh, people believed, okay, the battery will solve all of our transportation problems. But uh, if you understand a little bit physical backgrounds, you know, if you want to have, want to solve, want to have a real solution for mobility, then the fuel cell is the key to this. And I think all of the um, main car manufacturers are real on the track to bring solutions on the street with fuel cell cars to, let me say, competitive prices within a real good infrastructure for hydrogen supply. That is what we see and, and what we believe. Okay, fantastic. Um, do we have any questions from the audience just before we finish? Just raise your hand if you do, because I have um, one last question about uh, the data that is produced um, 
during testing? How yeah. how do clients capture that? How do they make sure that it's not lost? How do they? How do you? How do you this is a very very good question because if customer made an investment in test equipment, then um, he has no return on this investment. Not in that way that you have a production machine, production engine, and so on. What the test engine creates is data, and this is the value. And uh, you have to meet two demands. One demand is that all of the data are safe. And uh, this is, let me say, one of our biggest challenge, actually, that we keep all of this terabytes of data very safe and uh, that we have well proper designed backup systems but the second uh, demand is that you have uh, interfaces to all of the data mining tools because in research and development people work with uh, simulation software they work with own designed uh, development software own systems and uh, to find to each of these systems uh, very good data interfaces that data mining becomes very uh, very easy and and for all of uh, the engineers within a group this is I think another challenge and uh, or another uh, benchmark for a good test system so if, if you're interested in good testing equipment definitely fuel con <laughs> if you want to know more I'm sorry we're um, sadly out of time, but if you want to know more, uh, Fuelcon's booth is, is right over there, parallel... Uh, C64. C64, thank you, <laughs> well done. Um, thank you all for, for joining us. Thank you to you, Matthias. You're and, welcome. And um, enjoy the rest of the mess. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, thank you. Stay tuned because we are now going to start the next session um, with Nell Hydrogen and they're going to be talking about their new name, new visions and strong traditions. Thank you.